It's been over three years since 50 Cent officially announced that G-Unit was no more and stopped releasing music. It was a disappointing end of an era, but one that we all saw coming in the group's tumultuous and legendary run in the hip-hop game. G-Unit, abbreviated from Gorilla Unit, is the East Coast hip-hop crew and record label composed of its core members, 50 Cent, Lloyd Banks, Tony Yayo, as well as Young Buck. Now these guys, they practically defined the early 2000s between their countless platinum albums and chart-topping singles, but it was more than just their music. It was the brand and the lifestyle that G-Unit encompassed that had the hip hop community and, if we're being frank, the entire world in a chokehold. From the baggy throwback jerseys to spinner G-Unit chains, I mean, come on, they were a cultural staple. They represented the hood in America and hip hop in such a bold way that even suburban middle school American kids would wear do-rags under their hats trying to emulate 50 and his crew. It was undeniable and it was unavoidable. Everywhere you looked, it seemed like someone would be talking about or playing some G-Unit songs. In today's day and age, unfortunately, we don't hear about G-Unit as often as we used to. We of course see the mogul that 50 Cent has transformed himself into, but what happened to Lloyd Banks, Young Buck, and Tony Ayo? Keep watching to find out on our newest episode of Where Are They Now? In 2002, 50 Cent had signed a million dollar joint record deal with Eminem and Dr. Dre's labels Shady Aftermath. And after the ultra success of his debut album, Get Richard I Trying, which had features from multiple G-Unit members like Lloyd Banks, Tony Yayo, and Young Buck, this led to 50 quickly starting his own record label, G-Unit Records, where he immediately signed Lloyd Banks and Young Buck to begin working on their debut group project, Beg for Mercy. Tony Yayo was in prison at the time for most of this recording, so most of it was left to 50 Banks and Buck, and the debut was a huge success as Beg for Mercy sold 5 million copies. At this point, G-Unit was on top of the world and looking to expand. West Coast rapper The Game, who was discovered by Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre, and placed in the G-Unit as an additional member. This seemed to work very, very well for the crew at the time, as G-Unit's main members were all mostly from New York, aside from Young Buck, who's from Tennessee. So to have this up-and-coming rapper from Compton, California emerging, and backed by Dr. Dre to also be a member of G-Unit, I mean... <laughs> Come on, it's not even fair. It's like the Golden State Warriors or something like that. It was really an example of how dominant they were at the time. Adding the game to G-Unit really did seem to work as his debut album, the documentary generated multiple top 10 Billboard hit songs like With How We Do and Hate It or Love It, as the album itself sold considerably well. Now, all of this was almost too good to be true at the time with so much success coming from this G-Unit camp. Lloyd Banks, Young Buck, and The Game had each released their own solo albums and they each went platinum individually with each generating a charting rap single. I mean, this type of unanimous dominance across one camp is very rare to see. So what went wrong? At the beginning of 2005, tensions started rising between 50 Cent and The Game, which eventually led to one of the biggest feuds in hip-hop history, with a slew of diss tracks, and even led to a shooting outside of a Hot 97 radio station while 50 Cent was giving an interview. Though nobody was killed, it was still evident of how serious and to what extent this beef was getting to. It was so serious that a press conference was held between the two rappers to call a truce, and allegedly, I say allegedly because we never know how serious The Game is being in his interviews, but apparently my Michael Jackson had called the game, telling him to end the beef with 50 Cent. And he was like, uh, is there any, you know, would you be open to like having a conversation and squashing that beef and doing a song for my album? I was like, for your album? I'm not sure if that actually happened and if Michael Jackson actually made the call, but who knows? Sounds like a great story, doesn't it? In 2008, it was announced by 50 that Young Buck was officially no longer a member of G-Unit, though he was still signed to the label. 50 stated the reasoning for him being removed from the group was his inconsistent behavior and excessive spending. 50 also released a recorded phone call between the two men discussing their problems, where Young Buck breaks down crying to be let back into the crew. Yo, you gonna be all right, you hear me? I'm wrong. This is 50 this is 50.com. That nigga just get confused. Don't worry about it. You gotta be able to stay closer to me, Buck, so you don't fuck. Up. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. It's kind of a hit to your reputation when you're part of one of the biggest gangster rap groups of all time and then a phone call gets released of you crying. Yeah, it's just not a good look. This led to Young Buck releasing a diss track titled The Taped Conversation, where he addresses the whole thing. At this point, G Unit as a group moved into obscurity and we didn't hear or see much of Lloyd Banks or Tony Ayo, and it seemed that 50 had transitioned more into a businessman primarily while the focus of his music took a back seat. 50 started a number of business ventures, including his lucrative vitamin water deal and starting the hit series Power. In February of 2014, Tony Ayo claimed that G-Unit had broken up and he said he was no longer friends with 50. This led to 50 responding 
responding in an interview a few months later after Yeo's comments saying that due to the group's inner turmoil, G-Unit had been dismantled. So just as it seemed G-Unit was officially over on June 1st of the same year, the group reunited on stage at Summer Jam with all the original members and Louisiana rapper Kid Kid as an addition. The only person who was not included in the reunion was The Game. This reunion was followed up with multiple EPs, remixes, and music videos. However, these releases did not receive the attention and acclaim as their previous work. In 2018, it was announced by Kid Kid that he was leaving G-Unit as a group and record label. The same year, 50 released a song titled Crazy featuring PNB Rock, where he claimed that Lloyd Banks and him are no longer on speaking terms. Shortly after this, Banks announced his departure from the group, which now currently leaves only 50 and Tony Yayo on the roster. 50's career as a mogul blossomed and only continued to get bigger, but much of 50's mentality that he got from the streets had remained, as he seems to have a lot of tough love for the unit. As anytime 50 does an interview now and the group gets brought up, he's almost speaking down on them, even more recently stating that he wants to forget about G Unit. I don't, I don't care to do that. I think I'd like to forget the G Unit. What? So, what are the rest of the G Unit members up to now? Well, Lloyd Banks stayed pretty quiet from his 2018 departure up until now. So, many fans were demanding Lloyd Banks' music for years, and there's a point where it almost seemed that Banks had given up on himself when he tweeted, Let's be real, ain't nobody checking for Banks anymore. Now, to his credit, Lloyd was dealing with a lot at the time, including the passing of his father, which apparently 50 wasn't very compassionate to Banks about, which, let's be honest, I'm not sure if compassion is 50 Cent's forte. Many wondered if we would ever get a new Lloyd Banks record, and lo and behold, this past June, Banks released The Course of the Inevitable, which sold 12,000 copies and received generally positive reviews. This was the first album Lloyd Banks had released in 11 years. Young Buck, who has probably had the hardest transition since departing from G-Unit has filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy earlier this year. To make matters even worse, 50 is going after him in court stating that Young Buck still contractually owes him either two albums or $250,000 from his previous contract. 50 is really asking the court to dismiss this whole bankruptcy application for this reason alone, which is pretty savage considering 50 is well aware of what Young Buck's financial situation is. Although 50 says that this is his problem to deal with, what do you expect from a man who publicly disowned and beefs with his bio? Logical son. I mean, 50 is a certified savage. As for Tony Yeo, not much is known about him currently, as he flies pretty under the radar, but if there's anything that we know for certain, it's probably that him and 50 are most likely not cool anymore. My name is Clyde Smith, and if you enjoyed this look at the recent history of G-Unit, then please like and subscribe. Want to see someone else in this series, maybe The Game, or 50's other rival Ja Rule, please leave us a name down below, and I'll see you guys in another video.